Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is Chapter 77 of Chance Ball, and this one is titled Darby in Charge. The next day, Darby called a marriage celebrant that lived in the area and asked about her availability and gave her some dates. Yes, I can be available for any of those dates, the kindly celebrant said on the phone. Have you got a venue organised? Well, here's the thing, Darby said. Me and my girl have been together since high school, and we now have a baby girl. If she left me, I'd pursue her to the ends of the earth to get her back, and I know she'd do the same for me. We're soulmates, so what I want to do is organise a surprise wedding. A uh, surprise wedding? The celebrant asked dubiously. Yeah, she'll love it, Darby replied confidently. I've been a celebrant for a long time and I have only ever been involved in one surprise wedding and it didn't go down very well, she said honestly. If this goes down horribly, then someone has switched out my girl and it's an imposter, Darby said. The celebrant still wasn't too totally convinced but agreed to go along with his plans regardless. What he wanted to do was organise a little beach holiday for the three of you, you, him and Koemi. And while you were walking along the beach one afternoon, he wanted the celebrant to just walk up to the two of you on the beach and start talking about the union of two people. Then, when the speech was done, marry you both and then just walk off like nothing happened. Then, after that, he was going to take you to a restaurant nearby that had all the friends and family waiting, who would be in on the surprise by now, and that would be the reception. He had everything planned out in his mind. The only anomaly was Missy Kay. He really wanted her to get a pretty dress and to be able to throw petals while you and he were in the middle of getting a surprise marriage on the beach, but he didn't know if he could trust his little girl enough to keep quiet about it so as not to spoil the surprise. So he decided to test her. One afternoon, he bought some of your favourite chocolates and hid them in the cupboard before you came home. Then, when Komi woke up from her nap, he took her downstairs to the kitchen to show her the stash of chocolates. I got these for mummy, he said as he held her in arms. It's a secret, okay? We won't tell her that they're there until after dinner, okay? And if you don't tell mummy, I'll let you have as much as you like. Her eyes lit up like saucers and she stared at him. Can I have 1200? She asked in the most amazed voice that she could muster. Mm, it's a big number. I'm sure that we, that can be arranged. But you can't tell mummy, okay? It's a surprise. Okay, daddy. I'm good at some prizes. Good girl. I know you're clever. He praised her. Just then, he heard you walking up to the front door and he put Koemi down so she could run to greet you at the door. Well, we'll see how this goes. If she can keep this a secret, I might just be able to trust her with the wedding surprise. Your little girl met you at the door and gave you a big cuddle and you stepped in, eager to talk to Darby about your day. Hey, Mama. Darby greeted you with a kiss. How was your day? I'm glad you asked because Emmy has been scouted by a kindy volleyball team and she accepted. She's going to join next year, you said with excitement. I'll miss her, but she's a good little player, so I think this is the best thing for her. You continued to chat to Darby, and Koemi hung around for a little bit, but then went off to play, and nothing was mentioned about the chocolates. Dinner time came, and Darby thought for sure Missy Kay was going to say something, especially when you happened to mention that you were craving your favourite chocolates. Darby looked at Koemi to see if she would say anything, but she just replied his look with a blank stare, and then looked away as if to say, Uh, no, I don't think so. I'm keeping tight lips so I can have my share of the chocolates, thank you very much. And then it came time for dessert. Well, Darby said in a loud announcement type voice, I do have something here for your dessert, Mama. He gave you a sly look. I swear to God, Daddy, if this dessert is in your pants, I'm going to lose my sh shingles. <laughs> no. Darby chuckled. This one's in the cupboard. Oh, thank God. Koemi, you want to tell Mummy? He asked her. Is there still a surprise, Daddy? If I tell her, will I get my chocolate? She asked. Yes, baby, you can tell her now. Darby said with a little amused chuckle, and you'll still get your chocolates. Daddy got you your favourite cho chocolates, Mummy, and I can have a billion. Hey, whoa now, I thought it was only 1200 before, now it's a billion. You gotta read the terms and conditions, Daddy, they change very quickly, you said with a laugh. But what is this, my favourite chocolates? Uh-huh, he hided them in there so you wouldn't find them, and I wasn't allowed to tell you anything, she announced proudly. And she did really well, Darby commented with amusement pulling the chocolates out to give to his girls, who both looked very eager at that point. Well, I might just be able to trust her, but I'll tell her maybe the day before or morning of. I'll just see how it all pans out. He thought as he watched you both break the chocolates open and start devouring them. You were none the wiser as Darby went around behind the scenes and organised the wedding. He was methodical and strategic and planned it for after you would be finished for the year with the kids. Hey babe, he asked one night that later that week. Are you taking time off at the end of the year? 
It's been a big year. We should go away somewhere. Oh my god, yes, please take me away to a deserted island or something. Don't get me wrong, I love the kids, but I just need a break from them all. Except Comey. Okay, so, beach holiday? Hell yeah, let's do it. Darby said, pulling his phone out. Okay, come and sit down, help me find a place. You're ecstatic. Get away with your little family would be just great. It didn't take long to find a place, and before you knew it, you, Darby and Koemi were booked to stay at a beautiful beachfront villa up the coast at the end of the year just before Christmas. The minute you had booked it, Darby sent a message to the celebrant that he had saved as witness protection in his phone, so if you saw a message come through you wouldn't get suspicious. All of the celebrant messages were very straightforward anyway, usually to the effect of can you please email me the documents or please call me later today to organise times so you wouldn't have been worried about him cheating or anything anyway. Darby's messages on the other hand were a lot stupider as you can imagine and the poor celebrant would get messages like big bravo this is tiny tango location has been secured drop cocaine when ready and the poor celebrant had to try and decipher what the hell he was on about, hence her constantly asking him to call her so that she could get some sense out of him. Hey Hunter, you bastard! Darby called loudly as he walked into the practice hall at the end of the week. You ready to be best man? Hell yeah! When? Fuerji replied. End of the year. Listen, I need you to do me a solid. Sure. Do I kiss your ass now? Later. Fuerji asked, putting the volleyball down. Later. I'm going to need you to help get Koemi ready for being the flower girl on the day. You still seeing Susa? Yeah. We've got a date tonight, he said with a grin. Man, she's amazing. I'm pretty keen on this one. She's only had one boyfriend, and he was a dick, so she thinks I'm amazing. <laughs> Good for you, Darby said with an amusement. She might be a little bit of help in this too. I'll need to find a pretty dress for my little girl, so if Seuss is up to it, can I send her to buy one for me? Yeah, I'll ask her, but she should be fine with it. Sweet, Darby said with a grin. Also, next week, want to come with? So I can check out this location with the celebrant? Got a few weeks left to plan this, and so far it's all coming together well. I just need to organise the restaurant, but I'm thinking I'll do that when we get up there. I'm down. You just tell me what you need help with and I'll get it done, Fuerji said with a grin. I got you, man. Thanks, bro. Darby said with a slap to Fuerji's hand. Wednesday the next week, Darby pulled up to practice and honked his horn, and out came Fuerji from the hall. Let's roll, Darby said, pulling the passenger side window down to speak to his friend. We've got a few hours to get up there and sort this out, and then come back. Okay, let's go, Fuerji said as he hopped in the car. It was a little over one hour drive to get up there, and the pair chatted the whole way. For two guys who had been enemies at the beginning, they sure had changed, and Fuerji and Darby were in fits of laughter as they pulled up to the beach beside the resort that you'd be staying at. Okay, this is it, Darby said as he hopped out and looked around. There was a lady standing nearby with a book, and they made eye contact, and then she smiled and walked over. I'm assuming that you would be Darby Todoroki, she asked. You assume correct, Lady Celebrant, Darby replied with a grin. You look every bit as quirky as your text messages, she said with an amused look in her eye. I'll take that as a compliment, he replied, looking across the top of the car to where Fergie was standing by the passenger side door. This is my partner in crime, Darby introduced Fergie. Definitely not my wife. I guessed, the Celebrant said. Well, let's get to it, because I've got a tight schedule, Darby said authoritatively, pointing to the beach. Let's go over some things. He led the way ahead and down onto the sand and then started pointing out where he was hoping things would happen on the day. We're staying there. He pointed to the resort on the edge of the sand. So I'll suggest a walk to my girl. The celebrant nodded and looked to where he was pointing. So if you just wait under that tree over there, then when you see us walking along, come down, stop us, and then just start reading out the ceremony rites. The celebrant nodded with an amused smirk. And ta, Darby turned to his friend. If you and Susa hide over behind those bins there, I'll tell Koemi on the day to look out for you and to run over to you when she sees you. Hopefully Yin and I will be detained by the wedding process by then. Yeah, okay. And we get her into the dress and then send her back to you? Fuerji asked. Yeah. Might get you to buy a small container with rose petals or something in it so she can toss them around us while you do your thing. He looked to the celebrant who nodded. Then after it's all official, I'll pull the rings out of my pocket and put them on, kiss, and then I think the reception will be at the restaurant there. He pointed to a waterside building. We will need to have the documents signed, the celebrant said, so make sure you have two witnesses that are willing to sign the marriage. I'm one, Fuerji said, happy to sign this bastard over to someone else for life. Darby smirked at him and then spoke to the celebrant. Yeah, I'll find someone to sign for Yin. We'll do that at the restaurant, as they'll have tables there. He said, well, it all sounds very straightforward, the celebrant said. 
You sent me the dates too. I just need to know roughly what time this will be at. Let's make it 3.30 p.m. Darby said, Koemi usually wakes from her nap about 2.30. That'll be perfect. I'll suggest a walk before dinner at the restaurant. And I'll make sure everyone's at the restaurant too, Fuegi added. Susa and I can be behind the scenes managers. Thanks, bro. Darby said with genuine gratefulness. You ready for your surprise wedding? Stay tuned for the next chapter coming tomorrow. I'll see you then.